The basketball community saw what happened on Friday night between the Sydney Kings and the Perth Wildcats, and we have uh, NBL commentator Steve Cafino. Steve, Josh Childress had a brain explosion. What do you make of it? Well, it's shot probably just like everybody else. Um, and we tried to go back in and, and the footage and see what triggered that. And it was that and a screen of the back. It was uh, like a baseline screen. Uh, Childress didn't see it coming. And he got popped pretty good, but I mean, for the for the most part, it, it looked legal to me. You know, like uh, I, I could I, I what I what I put it down to is I thought that he was getting frustrated because you know, Perth grab and hack and reach and and I think that he just got frustrated over the course of time because I saw him complaining to the officials on previous play, and so I think it was just that that screen that he got popped with, and he, he you know like had a brain explosion. And, and he retaliated, and, you know, here we are talking about it now. Yeah, and look, coming from that, it, it can't just be, you know, at the, on social media or last night, he's, he's played, you know, a, a massive amount of games in the NBA and, and, and in the EuroLeague, you know, and it's, it's definitely what we would call out of character. Was it a build-up, do you think, throughout the game of, 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 of contact that may have built up to, to this, uh, this explosion? Yeah, because, I mean... The one that he retaliated on really wasn't that bad. You know, it wasn't like a really bad neck snapping back screen, you know, elbows out to the throw. It wasn't anything like that. It was just a good hard screen. Um, but, you know, like I said, you know, I was kind of observing his behavior before that. I could tell he was frustrated with how the game was being officiated. Um, and in saying that, I'm not at all make an excuse for for that um, that foul that he was ejected on. I thought they made the right call. Um, he had to be ejected on that. He didn't make a play for the ball. You know, you know his elbows were up around. You know, if he did if he if he didn't get him in the throat, it was it was pretty close to that area. Um, you know, Wagstaff wasn't injured, but you know that could have gone horribly wrong. Yeah, and, and speaking about that, Stephen, you know, for the image of the league, it, it's not a positive one, and definitely was in the uh, unsportsmanlike behaviour category. What, what do you think the the league need to do to to obviously take a bit of action with the incident, and what have the league got to do for for future? Well, you know, I think it's it's an incident just like any other incident. Um, you know, people saying he's got this much experience in the Euro League, he's got that much experience in the NBA, he's a veteran, he should know better, all those type of things. He's a dirty player. I don't I don't think that you can really put too much to that other than the fact that, you know, he had a brain explosion. It doesn't matter if you're a savvy veteran, it doesn't matter if you're a rookie, it doesn't matter if you're a physical player or, you know, a player that's educated, well spoken, doesn't matter. You know, I think that anybody is capable of having a brain snap, and he had one, you know, and I think that um, how it should be handled is um, just like any other player, just like, you know, any other incident, the evidence should be looked at, it should be dealt with swiftly, fairly, and then it should, everybody should put it behind him, because I just think it's a, it's a one-off incident. Yeah, for the Sydney Kings, that's a definitely a, a positive thing, and, and with the new head coach, uh, Damien Cotter, uh, you know, there would have been some some words after the game from your uh, commentary. Did you hear of anything uh, that Damien may have said to to Childress? No, I, I didn't think it was appropriate to go into the locker room. I usually try and go in to the Kings locker room to show my support as an ex player, but I just didn't think it was appropriate for an outsider to be in on those under those circumstances. So I just I just stayed stayed clear of that situation, and and uh, you know I'll speak to Damien at a later date. But I just felt like that was the time that the team needed to spend together and regroup and and use this incident to get closer. And Steve, we know you're uh, you're on your social media, on the Twitter, and that, and a lot of players and uh, current players from other codes and um, and even other teams went on social media last night and voiced their opinion in their own type of way. Uh, is this appropriate? And is this something the league needs to to jump on, or or is this a fair game for for the players to to jump on and voice their opinion? Well, I think everybody has to be careful of what they say. You know, we just had an incident with Paul Gallen who, um, you know, I tell you what, you, should, you shouldn't you should really tweet anything, use the social media when you're angry or you've been drinking. <laughs> That's <laughs> definitely some rules that should be followed. But I think that this is the, this is the society we live in now. You're open to that type of criticism. Um, you have the ability for free speech, you know, across the world. You know, and saying that, you should be careful.
mindful of what you say. And uh, but at the same time, you should you should be you should realize that you're going to be open to criticism worldwide. All right, Steve. Thank you very much for your time, and we can catch you tomorrow on the uh, the MBO. You head down to the Gong, and um, I'm sure we'll uh, hear from you very soon. But uh, Steve, uh, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Anytime. On the line, we've got MBL.TV commentator Matt McQuaid. Matt, thanks for joining us. No problem at all, Byron. Matt, Josh Childress had a bit of a brain explosion on Friday night. We've just spoken to Steve Cafino. What did you make of it? Well, I think it's very. we have to be very careful, first of all, is that uh, we understand that this is going to be looked at by the NBL Tribunal. We've already... Uh, We've already found that out. I, I think it's important to understand that we need to look at it in the totality of the situation, not look at it just as an isolated incident. It came in the aftermath of a very questionable screen set by Jesse Wagstaff, um, which knocked Josh to the floor. And if you go back and have a look at the game itself, there were a lot of things that were going on off the ball, very niggly things, um, which all kind of added up to this one you know, moment of very extreme frustration, obviously, from Josh's perspective, and I think everybody would, um, you know, would agree that it, it was obviously out of character for him. You know, he's shown himself to be just a great person uh, throughout his stay with Sydney, and, and it's so it's, it's something that is out of character for him. So, um, yeah, obviously, it was a it, it was a very uh, difficult situation, without a doubt. But I, I do believe that we we need to look at it completely in context and and not look at it as an isolated incident. Yeah, and I think you, with your comments there are very true. And you know, speaking to people um, today, I said, look, if, if, if he's in a court, of, a court of law and charged with, with, with murder, the, the judge would first of all say, uh, Mr Childress, this is, this is out of character. What, 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 uh, what led to this? And I think that's key that the, the league needs to look at it as a whole, as you say. And, and Matt, um, you know, with your insight with, with the league itself, what do you think the, the actions may be? Well, I think you, you, you look at precedent, and um, there's some immediate precedent with Gary Irvin last year. You know, Gary Irvin was suspended for a game for uh, what to me was, was probably even more an egregious act, um, which was, you know, the knee to Chris Golding's um, groin. So that, that to me was a, a probably even more egregious. Um, and I think if you're looking at it from a precedent perspective, um, I'd say you're looking at that. The only thing I would also say, and again, you know, I... I, I really want to be very, very careful. In, in We have to be very careful um, from a King's perspective that we don't cast any aspersions on the tribunal. They have to follow a process. Um, they have to work through that process. So, But, but from my perspective, I, I think that's the precedent that was set. Um, but again, you know, as I mentioned before, Josh has got, um, essentially, he's a, he's a guy of outstanding character um, and he's shown that throughout and uh, this is completely out of character for him. So I think they'll likely take that into account, but again, it, it's, it's sort of very hard to, to see which way they will go at the end of the day. And the man that's driving the ship is obviously the, the head coach, Damien Cotter, and assistant coach for the Opals. Now, uh, I know you've uh, taken, um, you know, you've, you've interviewed him in, in pre-season along the way and, and got a feel of what Damien's trying to w- bring with, to this team with a bit of culture. What do you think Damien's uh, reaction would be and, and how do you think uh, he would, uh, you know, get his boys together to, to get the, uh, the direction heading towards uh, where he needs it to be? Yeah, look, I, I think as a group, I, I think... Again, you, you can't just sort of have Josh in isolation there. I think as a group last night, um, it was disappointing because the group just uh, lost its composure completely. Um, you know, in a, in a real ferocious environment that really is unmatched in the NBL. We, there is nothing else like Perth Arena. Uh, and for some of those boys, um, they'd never seen that before. And um, that, 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 to me, is a learning experience. I think we have to remember Damien also as much as he's done for the Opals and the Australian junior team, is a rookie head coach at this level. Um, and he's going to be learning along the way as well as some of his players. And I'm very confident that the team will respond to this and bounce back. They've shown that they can respond to adversity extremely well. This is the toughest situation they've faced to date. But, um, you know, I mean, he is trying to build something. And um, I, I think he'll just take this as a valuable learning experience. And I think the boys in general will as well. So... Uh, yeah, you know, obviously, I, he's not going to be happy about it, clearly. I, I don't think any coach would be. But, um, you know, I, I think overall it, it, it will be a good learning experience to take forward to this very, very young and very, very new group at the end of the day. 
Yeah, and as you mentioned, that that being the case now, how, look, Childress may maybe um, maybe in uh, casual clothes and, and taking a seat on the bench. What does that mean for the Kings? Well, I think one thing you can take out of the preseason is that the team can win without him. You know, I mean, he really only played uh, the, the one game, which was in Wollongong, which is, sorry, against Wollongong in Moss Vale, um, which the Kings obviously won. But, uh, you know, he, he really didn't play, obviously, you know, didn't play at the Blitz. Uh, not that we won at the Blitz, but um, we won a lot of our preseason games. We won in New Zealand without him, and, uh, which was huge, you know, to beat the Breakers over there uh, in Christchurch. So um, we've shown that we can be very competitive without Josh. And I think the team will look at that as it's opportunities. It's opportunities for, for Kevin White to get more minutes. Um, it's opportunities for Cody Ellis to maybe play a slightly different role and play more in the three spot. Um, Daniel Joyce will get some more minutes. And then, obviously, one of the development players will step up. So I'm sure Damien will follow that philosophy that you know the Hawthorne AFL football club has followed very well for so many years, and that's next man in. So man down, next man up. And uh, that, that essentially means that uh, you uh, you know injuries, suspensions, you know they are a part of sport, and it's up to the individuals to, to basically deal with it and move on. And I'm very, very confident they'll do that. On behalf of Basketball New South Wales, I'd like to uh, thank you for, for joining us and, and, and for your, your comments. And you can catch uh, Matt McQuaid on NB, NBL.TV, and he, he commentates uh, a fair few of those games. And, and um, look, Matt, thank you so much, and we'll, uh, we, we'll talk soon. No problem, Byron. Thanks for having me.